I call this meeting of the Orange Town Town Board to order. Uh, town Clerk, could you please call the roll? On the, on the roll call, Councilman Foy. Councilman Dibney. Here. Councilman Valentine. Here. Councilman Jatari. Here. And Supervisor Day. Here. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, someone could grab the sign-in sheet from the back there. I don't know if you have it up here. And we have a few announcements today. First, we will be having a public hearing on March 13th here at 8 p.m. regarding the Orangeburg Commons mixed-use zoning application. Then on April 10th at 8.15 p.m., We'll be having a continuation of our public hearing on the proposed Tilgal Law regarding uh, regulations of devices and public rights of ways, which we started off in December and again in the February in the last meeting, and we'll continue again in April. Uh, then again on April 10th, we will have a continuation of another public hearing on a proposed local law regarding our performance standards for particulate matter and odor. Uh, that is again April 10th at 825, so basically right when the first one's over. And finally, another announcement, the Greenbush Road Bicycle Bypass Project. There will be a neighborhood information meeting on Tuesday, March 6th, so a month, a little less than a month, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, downstairs in the multipurpose room. So there will be a smaller room downstairs over by the police area. Uh, just uh, make sure if you're in that neighborhood, you're interested in the project, it's a bicycle path around the 303 intersection with Greenbush Road. Please come by. All right, so first we're going to start off with our public comment period, just open public comment. Then we'll move to our public hearing that we have today, which is scheduled for a section of Pro River to adjust parking meter times. Uh, so if I could have Esther Baitler, please, for public comment. Good evening, Supervisor Chris Day and Tam Ford members and John Edwards. Hi, my name is Esther Baitler, and I'm a consumer who lives at the Kathy Lucas Independent Living Center in Fork Hill. Number one, I would like to know what is going on with aloof, with the mitigating odors into people's homes in Blauville. I want to know why a public health engineer has not been hired to deal with this. The odors are awful. I mean, I, I really think that you should have appointed more people on the Clean Air Committee for Orange Town. Because they have spent numerous hours protesting and to get somebody to deal with it. I smell it when I go to work in the morning on the bus. I, I, I don't understand why they haven't been shut down by the DEC or by the police department or fire department. Number two, I would like to know what is going on with the street lights. This is absolutely ridiculous. I have seen better electric companies that do better work. I don't think that Albright should have won that bid. Other people got it, and we didn't. That's wrong. Ventures should have been the first delegates to get it. It's a safety issue. And all you guys care about is, oh, other people come first. That, it, it's ludicrous. I've never seen anything so selfish. It's really, at night, if you ride down 340, the lights go on and off all night. I've seen car accidents near Thorpe Village and Dominican Convent. When it snows, people go into a ditch when they're driving at night. I want to know why we were not given first chance at it. It's 
it's really not right. You guys don't understand venture. We're one of the best agencies in the county and state. Yes, there are other agencies that are good, but venture is a priority. Thank you, Esther. And I think it's really unfair that you guys keep ignoring us. Thank you, Esther. Like, we don't matter. Thank you, Esther. Have a great night. All right, now we have Barbara Dello from Blauville. Hi. Thank you. Um, two, two points. Uh, it has come to my attention that according to the town structure, the attorney's attorney job responsibilities only extend to helping town board members. They have no responsibility to help citizens with reasonable questions regarding the laws of the town. Since the taxpayers ultimately pay their salaries, shouldn't this be changed so the town attorneys can answer legitimate inquiries from the citizens regarding the laws of our town? Second topic, it is really a reality here in Orangetown that many families need two incomes to pay their mortgage, meet their expenses, care for their families, and plan for their and their children's future. So in most homes, both parents work. This requires new ways to look at time demands and meeting responsibilities as after work hours are filled with errands, managing a home, a doctor's appointments and occasional commitments, and always the needs of our children. We also live in a world of air travel, global jobs, and often family members live distances apart. My experience is that older citizens are sometimes the ones who become left out. Some even spend many hours alone. I would like to suggest that the town board establish a senior appreciation day. It could be modeled after the successful highway department open house that becomes for many such a wonderful family day. And it could be lots of fun with old TV or movie clips, think Lucy or Abbott and Costello, a bit of historical information, old time toys. I'm thinking grandma and the grandchildren doing the hula hoop together. Perhaps rides or displays of ridiculous hair and clothing styles, I remember them, and other items to spark cross-generational dialogue. But it also could be serious and have booths that raise awareness of services in our town and county that are available to seniors. It could educate about safety concerns specific to this demographic, and it could provide information on how to file a safety complaint or find help if needed. It seems to me this idea has few negatives. It would be a fun day, it's comparatively inexpensive undertaking, and it could be designed to be helpful to the full range of age groups. Most importantly, it would show respect and appreciation to so many of our senior citizens. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, do we have anyone else who's interested in public comment? We only have two sign-ins today. Going once, sir. Uh, Rich Lenahan, Pearl River, New York. Um, I'm one of the families, one of the residents who's uh, in Orangetown, uh, who is stuck in the Nanuet School District. It's been that way since probably the 40s, when there, weren't, there wasn't that much building around here. Um, I understand we're going to talk about that, or we may have a resolution tonight. Um, and I want to thank you, uh, the board, uh, specifically Chris Day, Tom, um, everyone who is up here. I've spoken to each one of you individually. You all understand uh, the issue. And uh, I want to thank you for bringing this up, because this has gone on since, I guess it was last year, we all got hit with a 14.8% increase in our school tax alone. Brian Kenny, uh, I spoke to him. He went up to uh, Albany, and he was able to get it down to 8.7 or something like that, which is still too high. It's, it's crazy. This is all to do with equalization. This is all to do with government, really. I mean, we, we talk about trees blocking things and everything. This is, this is government taxation that is affecting homesteads here in Orangetown. And uh, so this does have to go to the board. Now, I know you're, you're limited in what you can do here, but I think your voice here you have a bigger voice than I certainly do up in Albany, and you may have a bigger voice even with the school district. Um, 
So I just want to thank you for doing that. What we're doing tonight is a great thing. It's a lot of words on paper, but I'm hoping that this can result in something. And one of the only other things, the two problems we have, and everybody knows this, it's equalization and it's Pfizer. Pfizer used to pay 40% of Nanuet's school, so they, here you go, here's the money, no problem. That's over. And it's hurting now, it's going from the business to the homesteads. And it's gonna get to a point where if you get hit with 14, and then maybe it's down to three, it's back up to 14 again. People are not gonna be able to afford to stay here. And I don't mean to stay here like in Orangetown. Orangetown, like Pearl River, they're pretty, well, they don't have to deal with, the, with that issue. Um, but we do, and I think it's like 800 something homesteads that are affected. So I'm looking that we take care of what we can do tonight, and I understand, and maybe you guys can explain it, and when I say you guys, I mean someone on the board could explain what is happening with Clarkstown and what we could do maybe to mend together to come up with something. But I wanna thank you, um, Mr. Day, you've been here for a month, two months, and you brought this issue up before you were even sitting in that chair. I was sitting here, I was gonna bring it up, but you brought it up and I didn't have to. And I've talked to Mr. Divney, I, I've talked to uh, all the councilmen that are up here, Dennis Troy, I've talked to him numerous times. They're all fully aware of it and it seems like you guys have a handle on it. I just wanna keep it going, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. All right, any other uh, <coughs> comments, public comment period? Anyone else wanna raise their hand? No? Okay. So I'm gonna take a minute, we'll address what was brought up. Um, oh wait, we have to move to close the public comment, right? I'll move to close public comment. Second from Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right, uh, to Esther, our first public comment. Uh, we'll deal with Aloof. So first, Aloof did refuse entrance to our testers. Uh, we did re refer them to the ZBA. That's a process that could re result in a revocation of their special permit situation that allows them to continue operating under the current uh, regime of testing. Uh, obviously, we know that there's a lawsuit going on. We can't go into the details of the lawsuit, but we can say is that we are progressing on fines. There are items that are violations that are, gonna be put in, that are being put into court and being referred to court for additional violations that we can see from the outside. They did deny that access at the point for our stack testing. Um, that denial of access is considered a violation in our minds, and that's why they're back, gonna be back to the ZBA. So we will progress with that, and we will ensure that we're doing everything we can. We have, uh, I have a meeting with the DEC commissioner for the region on Friday. It was, she's reached out to me after our first update in January, and it looks like she's really interested in trying to help out from the state level, and the key is gonna be combining forces and coordinating better between the state and local and what, we, what our different responsibilities are with that. Specifically to the public health engineer position, we still have not received any sufficient applicants at the current public health engineer position. We have designed a modification of the job requirements to permit basically younger folks who have the qualifications to apply but don't have that time and grade. We think that might be the best solution because this is gonna be a position where someone's supposed to be out there doing enforcement, actively sort of motivated to get things going. We don't wanna get necessarily the end of career person when someone is really trying to make their mark. Uh, so we're trying to looking at potentially listing that job and seeing what sort of applicants we can get, what would be called a junior public health engineer, but in practice, it's the exact same qualification, just you're looking at someone in the early to mid career stage as opposed to the mid to late career stage, which I think, honestly, is probably a better fit for the position anyway. We'll see what we get for that, but the issue is just simply a lack of applicants, and the position was advertised. It's, it's a difficult situation to, to fill. It's very specific requirements and very specific governmental salary issues that when you get into those level of qualifications, you're t starting to price out the ability of government to pay that sort of salary. Uh, to the LED street lights, you know, I, I, I appreciate the feedback, but I do have to disagree very strongly. Albright Electric has been doing an amazing job given the weather and given everything else. They're going to be done ahead of time and substantially under budget. We're actually going to be able to use funds from this program for other energy saving initiatives. We're going to be looking at things like electric vehicle charging stations, like putting more lights along Northern Route 303. These are options we can use with our extra money that's already been funded uh, because they've done such a great job. In terms of timing, I, I I and everyone on the board agree completely that Venture is an incredible organization. However, Venture is also on a major state road, and all of the major state roads have been timed to be the last thing that's done because Albright requires additional safety precautions legally on those roads. They have to rent out street signage, those arrow signs you see on trailers, and if you do it one by one by section, 
that artificially inflates the cost. So they're doing the whole town and coming back for the whole main roads, 303, 340, 304, those corridors will be done together. Right now they've progressed along, they've done everything else on the eastern half of the town and they're progressing into Pearl River as we speak. We expect to be done right around the St. Patrick's Day proceedings. It won't interfere whether it's not completely wrapped. Everything is, you know, bottled up at the end there. They'll be doing the downtown Pearl River area as well with the ornamental lights, and that's all included as well. So everything is progressing greatly. Yeah. Esta, Esta, you know, we're, we're one of two towns in Rockland who are doing this. The only other one is Clarkstown, and it was approved in November of last year, and we're not talking to each other right now, okay? So you have to please stop, all right? It was approved in November of last year, the project work did not start until December of last year. At the tail end of it, I was already measure literally measuring the drapes from my office when it started. And then it's been underway in January and now a half of February. They're doing a great job and we commend them for that. Barbara, to your question regarding town attorney responsibilities. The reason the town attorneys don't directly help is simply because the overwhelming workload that would result. If you ever have a question regarding town code, there's two options. One, reach out to one of us and we can task a town attorney to help out, which is what we do. When, I, when someone asks me about whether what this law is that, I don't know off the top of my head. I always reach out to John or to Rob McGreen or to Teresa Kenny, and we get the answer that way. But we just need to maintain that they're internal employees for a reason, just because of the sheer volume that would happen if we put out free legal services to folks in that way. We, that's not their job. There's also other ways to find out questions through the FOIL process, but our contact info is there. We're always happy to help and task the town attorneys in that manner. Uh, Senior Appreciation Day, I think that's a really cool idea. I'm going to ask Eric about the feasibility of it, our Parks and Recreation Director, and see where it could be done and what we could look at. Um, certainly look into it. I do think it's a good, nice community event idea. And finally, Mr. Lenahan, thank you very much for the comments. I appreciate it. I wanted to just speak briefly. This is not what we're doing tonight. There's a resolution essentially asking for legislation on two items. One is the equalization rates between towns and split school districts so that, say, the values change in the Nanuet, Orangetown portion of Nanuet or the, or the Clarkstown portion of Nanuet, it keeps it in a band of no more than 1%. So you don't have wild swings in one way or the other based on a change in taxables or in rateables or something like that. The other legislation we're requesting, and that is being coordinated with Clarkstown as well because we require their buy-in. The other legislation we're requesting from Albany is legislation that regulates the shift between homestead and non-homestead so that in the case, for example, was given with Pfizer property, you don't see more than a 1% shift in any given year onto the homesteads because of a change in our commercial base that, that could be a sudden thing where something becomes vacant or, or knocked down. Uh, these things are we designed us to, to stabilize so that when we say your tax increase or your tax decrease is X or Y, that's what you get and you're not getting a 14% tax hike. Procedurally, Brian, Brian Kenny, our, our assessor, is also working on just standard stuff we can do in terms of adjusting the rates with the mechanisms currently available, but these pieces of legislation here will be forwarded up to Senator Colucci, Assemblywoman Jaffe, and Assemblyman Zabrowski up in Clarkstown, and they're gonna use that to show that we actually want this legislation, get the special legislation passed, hopefully, which I, I've heard good things about it possibly getting passed. We're gonna be sharing this with the Nanuet School District, Nyack School District, and Clarkstown Town for them to pass the same thing. And then when the time comes, we'll pass home rule legislation to allow us to actually implement it. Um, I think that's about it. Pfizer IRG, we're working on getting it occupied. That's going to be what ends up helping it. We're working with them. Uh, Any else on the? Yeah, Chris hit everything. Uh, but uh, as far as the resolutions that we're going to pass regarding the equalization rate, um, we can pass the resolutions and we can send them to Carlucci. But anyone in the Nanuet district that's affected should be emailing David Carlucci. You should be d emailing Zabrowski because these guys got to car carry the water up, up at that level. We can do the resolutions, but I think if they have emails or letters from m uh, people in that district, it, you know, it's going to get them more motivated to actually pass this legislation. So I, I, I ask that anyone that's listening in the audience or on TV that you email Carlucci, Zabrowski, Jaffe, and say, listen, we need to have some stability. We need to know that we're not going to get hit with such an increase in taxes because of a shift of the rates. Uh, I also would suggest that uh, Supervisor Day make Brian Kenny available at the March 6 meeting so that anyone who wants to come down here with questions can ask Brian questions regarding how this process works, a little bit more detailed and 
I mean, he's our expert. He should be able to answer those questions. Um, as far, I'll just hit on Aloof. Um, we have outside counsel. They've been advising on our next steps, and they're doing a great job. Um, as Chris said, you know, uh, the town attorney's office is assessing aloof numerous violations based on their contact, their conduct. And as far as the public health engineer position, we've had numerous people interview. I, you guys are probably getting tired of me telling you this, but the county basically is knocking out everyone that we want. Um, we, need, we, we would prefer to have someone that would be here for 20 years and, as Chris said, not someone who just wants to pad their pension uh, in the town of Orangetown. Uh, again, we want someone that's local. We've gotten, we've gotten resumes from, like, Colorado. Um, uh, so we want someone that has an interest in the community, that supports the community, and uh, we have a couple of candidates, and I'm hoping we'll get more candidates once we repost this, uh, this posting. And that's about it. Um, I think almost every item was pretty much covered by Chris and Tom. The only thing I would reaffirm is what Tom said. It's very important that everybody, there's 800 and something uh, homesteads in that area that are affected. As many of those people as you can get to send an email or a letter to Colucci and Jaffe and them to push them, they hear it. They actually hear the voice. So we can, we can be the loud voice, but we need all the little voices behind us saying, yes, we need this. And, um, and it does amount to something because they're always worried about their next election, right? So uh, they hear the residents. So if the residents speak up, I think it would be a good thing for everybody to get behind that and push it and help us push it across the finish line. That's it. Yeah, I, I think you guys answered all that well. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. But uh, also, I'd just like to point out that um, tonight, there will be a new committee starting in the town. It's uh, the creation of the town of Orangetown uh, Air Quality Review Board. So um, that will be one more tool, hopefully, that helps us. Um, we have some uh, looked over a lot of resumes, and we have some, uh, some local scientists and engineers that uh, have volunteered. So um, that will be starting as of tonight. So uh, again, hopefully that will uh, add to the other stuff. All right? Thank you. Great. Thank you. It's very true. I'm, I'm going to get into that when we get to that point of the agenda. Um, all right. So we are, I guess we're five minutes so we can get ahead into the uh, part. Was there any sign-ins for this on the front for the public hearing for the parking meters? Okay. So I, uh, do have, I move that we open the public hearing for the town of Orangetown regarding parking meters. Is there a second? Second. So, uh, we get Tonsman Divini beat them. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right. So are there any comments? about the public hearing regarding our parking meters in Orangetown. Essentially, we're making some uh, a little shorter to close to the, to the train station, and people are parking for too long, coming blocking businesses out. It's basically uh, two parking meters in yep. front of the antique shop because people are parking there and going on a train, and then it's affecting his business. So the, it's really affecting two parking meters. Yep. That's what this is about. This is a legally required hearing, probably not a practically required hearing, but you got to do what you got to do. All right, here, having no comments, uh, I'm going to move that we adjourn and close the public hearing regarding amending the town code, since we don't need to continue it. That's what Valentine, all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, so now we're going to have a series of appointments for our land use boards and such. So first, we're going to start with our land use boards committees. Gentlemen, can you just take a quick look at the list, make sure this is what we said? Do we need, is that it? For, are we done with that now? Or do we have to do a passing of it? So we want to add that now? It's here. Yeah, it's here. So we can just move the actual public law. We, there's no more time requirements now that we've adjourned the public hearing. Okay. You want to move that, Paul, since you yeah. caught it? Um, I'd like to move that we pass the local law pertaining to those parking meters. Okay, second. Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. All right. Great. And now we have 30 minute parking zones in two spots. Moving on to the land use boards and committees. We have the, one of the things in the town board for folks that are looking at it, every down committee has a liaison appointed to it from the board to be the primary person they talk to. This just appoints that. Everyone good with that list? That was what we had sent around, okay. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Councilman Valentine, second. Councilman Vitari, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right, now I'm just gonna hit a pause button on this. What we're doing here first before we do the rest of our committees 
is we're creating our new Town of Orangetown Air Quality Review Committee. In talking with the process and in investigating the way other committees like this are done, we kept it at five people. Two in-house experts, which are from our Code Enforcement Division and from our Engineering Department. It will be the Public Health Engineer when they come. Until then, it'll be one of our engineers still qualified to help assess with that sort of stuff. And we got more applicants than we had space for. What we did get, though, and the folks that are going to be appointed to this following the actual creation of the committee are just incredible resumes. So we have one gentleman who it was, where it spent 30 years over working at Pfizer, literally as a scientist and chemical engineer, degree from Cornell University, just an expert in chemicals and what we need on the board. We have another gentleman here who's active in clean air for Orangetown, who is an air quality uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, where is he? Which one is he? I'm sorry. Yeah, Michael Nordstrom. He's involved with uh, engineering, chemical engineering, air quality already. He's been again active on the issue. Lives in Belal Belt, right where the current problems are, which is just great for the, uh, the 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 board itself. And then we have uh, our scientist, an actual scientist from Lamont Doherty, who's also a resident of Orangetown, member of the Democratic Committee. Uh, so he's active in the community, and he is public. He's actually done himself air quality studies, like we're paying TRC Solutions to do right now. He did one in Spring Valley, showed me the results of it related to some train emissions at a, at a rail yard. Caught them running their trains at night when they said they weren't over at the Metro, Metro North Line there, the New Jersey Transit Line. So this is someone. These these are people who bring that local involvement and also bring that just pure level of expertise, because this is a working board where we're going to make sure they're hearing the complaints and making recommendations for changes to law. And we wanted to make sure we had the best people possible. Unfortunately, we got the best resumes one could hope for, and several others that, just unfortunately, there's no space where we did find place for pretty much everyone in other places in our committees, but this one, we wanted to keep it five. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move the resolution creating the Town of Orangetown Air Quality Review Committee. Is there a second? All right, Councilman Batari. Creating the committee first, then we're going to do the appointments after here. Yep. And it comes to our second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And the next resolution is appointing. Um, Chris, I just have a question. Yes. We have Mike Mandari and Jane. I'm sorry, there's a mistake here. Yeah, that should be instead of Jane, we should be appointing. It's going to be someone from the. Who's um, Bruce Peters? Bruce Peters, yeah. Bruce Peters. That was just the wrong name was taken out. Sorry. Good, good catch. So that's our engineer. Uh, Paul, do you want to move that? Sure. Uh, second? Second from Tom. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next, we're appointing and reappointing Orangetown Parks Development Advisory Committee. Is there a motion? Liaison. Liaison is me right now. That's what it was with Stuart before. Yeah. I'll make a motion. All right. Oh, second. no, it was you. You gave it up second. to me. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, Project Review Committee, appointing and reappointing. Do we have a, I'm sorry, who sees how much movement? That's the one I gave up. That's to the you. one you gave to me. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. All yeah, all town employees. All probably makes sense. Anyway. I'll pass that. All right. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. New and old folks joining. Uh, second? Yes. All right. Dennis is on it. Uh, Council Batari moves, and we have a second from Councilman Valentine. All in favor? Aye. All right. Traffic Advisory Board. This is actually very similar to our Air Quality Board, but for traffic, so that's good. Uh, uh, motion. Um, make a motion. Motion from Valentine. Second from Atari. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Office of Ema Emergency Management Committee. All town employees. There are all town employees on this one. This is a very important one for emergencies. Doesn't uh, it's if there's a natural disaster or something like that. Make the motion. Councilman Divney. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Blue Hill Golf Committee. You had one more person to add to that, right, yeah, Paul? Christina Heim. Christina. H e i n. I'm okay. Uh, you want to move it? I'm a, I'm okay. Uh, second from Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. Health Services Advisory Committee. Is there a motion? Yeah. From Batari. Second from Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Youth Recreation Advisor Assessment Advisory Committee. I'll move that. Councilman Dibney. Second from Councilman Batari. All in favor? Orange Town Environmental Committee. And we got a couple of good additions. Uh, Michael Laquette, actually, I want to point out, he's a member of the planning board over in one of the villages, and will bring some really good experience there, I think. Um, is there a motion? We've got a couple of new 
Peace Councilman Batari. Second from Councilman Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Shade Tree Commission. Um, we are appointing the Shade Tree Commission just a modification. We're making it a subcommittee of the Environmental Committee so that it can kind of tie in with that general gist of it instead of being its own standalone thing. Uh, I'll move that. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. Uh, then we have a, we're appointing a, a chairperson, a new chairperson of ACABOR, which is our Architectural and Community Appearance Board of Review for one year. It'll be Andrew Andrews. All right. Is there a motion? I'll move motion. Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Batari, all in favor? Now we're again just we're now we're at the point of individuals on the board. Just the boards and the committees are slightly different. Now we're reappointing Brian Atchison, a member of ACABOR, for a three-year term. Is there a motion? Oh, oh yeah, Councilman Divney, second. Lovely Batari, all in favor? Aye. We reappoint Chris Dunnigan as a member of the uh, of ACABOR for a three-year term. Is there a motion? Move. Councilman Val Divney, move. Valentine, second. All in favor? Aye. And Shirley Goble Christie is a member of ACABOR for three-year term. Yeah. Valentine Batari, second. All in favor? Aye. Dominic Zagaroli, member of uh, Board of Assessment Review. He's actually involved with assessing in his profession, so that's perfect. I'll make a motion on that. Councilman Divney, second. Second. Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Uh, supervisor, I, we need another one to that board, right? For Board of Assessment Review? Yeah, we have two people leaving. Was there two leaving, Amanda? Susan Perzigian and Matt Reed. What? Do you have someone in mind? No, I'm just saying we need to I put we need to get someone on there. I didn't realize we were too short on that. We're t we got too short. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to check on that then. Okay. Do we wanna we, press we'll hold on we'll it? We'll have to put it out there. Yeah. But, but I just know I, two people on that board con a little time on contact it. me because I'm the liaison and they okay. they both served I think it was Matt Reed and Susan Brzezigian been on that board for years and they're just I thought Brazilian was staying I think maybe I was okay I guess no. there was, was a miscommunication yeah all right we'll get that filled in in the next meeting all right it's not a big deal excellent okay we'll just check on that uh, then Lisa Leode Leode Board of Ethics Councilman Batari second right. from me Councilman Dibney all in favor Aye. William Walther member of Habor historical area boards of review for five-year term I'll move it second from Councilman Valentine all in favor Aye. Wayne Garrison, member of Haybor for five year term. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Councilman Valentine, second. Uh, Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Walter Wheatley, Walter Scott Moved. Wheatley. Councilman Divney, second from Councilman Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Lauren Plotkin for Haybor. Uh, there was a lot of vacancies that popped up on Haybor at one time, coincidentally. Uh, is there a motion? Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Divney. All in favor? All right. Then we're going to be bumping up essentially a promotion here. Blythe Theos, who, who was the chair of our ACABOR, is being moved up to the planning board for a seven year term. Is there a motion? Moved. Councilman Divney, second from Councilman Valentine. All in favor? Aye. And then we're appointing Tom Warren as our new chair of the planning board uh, for a one year term. Uh, is there a motion? Moved. Councilman Batari, second from Councilman Divney. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, John McCullough as a member of the Sanitation Commission, five-year term. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Batari. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Reappoint Charles Skip Vizzetti, a member of the Sanitation Commission, for five-year term. Mm -hmm. Councilman Valentine, second from me. Divney. Uh, and all in favor? Aye. All right. And then he's also going to be appointed the chairman at the same time there. Uh, I'll move that. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Okay, reappoint Patricia Costelli, a member of the Z ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, for five-year term. Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Batari, all in favor. Aye. Reappoint Leonard Feraldi as an alternate of the Zoning Board. That's a one-year term as an alternate. Is there a motion? Councilman Valentine, all in favor. I'm sorry, second from Councilman Divney, all in favor. Aye. Okay, reappoint Dan Sullivan as chairperson of Zoning Board of Appeals for one-year term. Moved. Councilman Divney, I'll second. Resol uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. We're going to modify this resolution for the Rockland County Planning Board. We get to recommend people. We were told two, we're told one, then we're told two, and now we're one again. So we're going to recommend Bert Von Warham for the Rockland County Planning Board for a four-year term, and then the county will go through their process and hopefully appoint him. Bert worked for the town for a long time, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> in the uh, building department, and he's got a lot of knowledge and he'll do a great job. For yeah, we need there. to have a good voice up there because what they say affects us, and what they say about other areas affects us too. 
So it's very important. Um, is there a motion? Moved. Councilman Divney, a second. Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And reappoint Michael Mandel, chairman of the Board of Ethics for a one year term. So, uh, I guess I'll move that. And is there a second? Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. And appoint Christy Bauman, a member of the Board of Ethics for a five year term. Is there a motion? Yeah. All right, second from um, Councilman Valentine. That motion was from Councilman Batari. I uh, didn't say it out loud. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and we're going to be doing one more. Batari Valentine. Batari Valentine, sorry, Charlotte. Um, we're going to be adding an alternate to the planning board. There's a legal process involved. It'll take about another month or so. That's going to be appointed uh, in March at some point, maybe the first meeting in April. And that'll be great because it'll allow us to make sure if there's someone not there, we could still have meetings. And there's already an alternate for ZBA. But that'll come in the future. Okay, so now we have the bond resolutions that we, we workshopped last week. This is all things that are available on our website for specifics, so you don't have to read through every single detail of it. But essentially, we bond every two years for capital projects. And otherwise, Jeff, do you want to say a few words about it? Or does anyone need to hear from Jeff? I mean, we heard from him in the, the other workshop meeting. Any questions? No. no okay, because he, he spoke at the workshop meeting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start taking care of these. Do we have a motion on? Yep. Yeah, you have to do them all individually. It's unfortunately. There's a lot of like just process management oh. in this particular meeting, folks, and I apologize. Do we have a motion for the $545,000 worth of bonds regarding oh. various things? I mean, do we need a suit majority on these or no? No. You need four. We need four. Then I think we should adjourn this because I'm not ready to vote on these. You don't want to vote on the bonds yet? No. Okay. So all the bonds? Yep. I mean, we really didn't, we really didn't discuss it at the workshop last week. Uh, I would like to speak to the department heads again, because the last time we talked to the department heads was in September. What are the total amounts of bonds that we're, we're, we're voting on tonight? Jeff, you want to step up and so they can hear on the TV? Sure. Total amount of the bonds is 8.3 million. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want to sit down with the department heads before I vote on these. I, I would just um, also remind the board that you can always reduce these amounts after this. So if you were to vote on them tonight and you want to do a lower amount, you can always lower it. You can't raise it. So that's I up to the board. I understand that, but I, my philosophy is once I vote on it, they're gonna spend whatever I voted on. So. Just to take it through, it was originally requests were about $13 million in the fall. We took it down, and the previous bond amount was 9.5-ish, right, Jeff? Right, that we were well, well, we'll pay off about $9 million, $9 million. over a two-year period. So, so this net-net, this should still continue to reduce our debt. Right. Okay. And I understand, but I'm still not ready to vote on this. I think Councilman Troy should be here to, to see what he has to say on this also. Okay. I just told it will be voted on in March, then we'll have to... Just push it off a little bit and go from there. All right, keep flipping forward. We're going to. Uh, you may want to do the public hearing, though. If you vote on the public hearing for March 13th, then right, for the sewer the same bonds. Time, then. All right. Um, that way we don't have to hold up yeah, the process. Which resolution is that one, Jeff? Do you that's, remember? Yeah, that's the, the last, last one. one. I'll, I'll all right, move yeah, that. 45. All right, no Councilman Divney moves. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we set our public hearing date for the bond issuance on March 13th, which gives us time to continue talking without holding up the process as well. So that's actually no big deal whatsoever. All right, thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so now we're moving on to that's part of the public hearing. Uh, tanker avoidance zones. We discussed this last week. Essentially, we're trying to make sure that any oil ships don't crash into things in the Hudson River. It's a thing that's been passed by other municipalities. Is there any issues or questions on our end here? No. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second from Divney. Motion from Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And then we have a moralizing resolution opposing congestion pricing in Manhattan. You know, it's been proposed to put tolls at 60th Street and below. Take that insult to injury, the bridges to the east of Manhattan get to get deducted from that toll, and our bridges do not. So we are just putting it, our strong word out there that we really, really don't want this because it would affect our commuters. I'm going to move that. Is there a second? 
Second. And Councilman Divney, all in favor? Aye. All right. Next, we have the ONR rate increase as requested. ONR recently requested a 5% increase in their electric delivery costs and a 3% cost in charges, sorry, and 3% increase in their gas delivery charges. And they are trying to claim that that's what they need. We are trying to say that given their reduction in the corporate tax rate and given the fact that their profit margins have gone up, we want to make sure that they do not get that all at one time. And if they do get it, it's always netted out and all savings from the tax bill are passed on to the consumers, not into the pockets of ONR and that their net profit margin is monitored to make sure they're not padding it by bit rate increases given that they are a monopoly uh, and a public utility. Uh, is there a motion? We're going to ask basically the state to, to deny it and modify it and make sure we have the proper situation there. I'll make a motion. Councilman Valentine, second. Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Okay, then we're on to the stuff we talked about for Nanuet equalization rates is the one where they shift between one town and another. We're going to ask for legislation to, mount, to put a band of 1% on that shift. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Councilman Divney, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And then we have a similar one that's class of taxable property. We're requesting that it not shift between uh, homestead, non homestead by more than 1%. Clarkstown got this passed for their town last year. We want to do it for our town. Uh, I'll move it. Is there a second? Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Next, we have uh, Gold Cap Consulting. This is the one where we pay him 5000 He looks at all our recurring expenses, and then we will then pay decide whether to pay him percentage of that as fee to actually save us money in the long run. Uh, is there a motion for that one? Yeah. I mean, okay. we did this. What did we do this with the, the uh, John, what did we do this recently with the, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a few years back, yeah. And then we do it. That worked out well. Then we do that with. Yeah, this is the study portion, and then we'll, right. they'll give us recommendations based on this, and then he can implement, and then get paid for the implementation, yeah, which. Verizon. Right. Yeah. This, is, this extends further to other right. other things. That yeah, work, that, any recurring expenses. That worked out pretty well. So. And it, yeah. he did this for Clarkstown. Apparently, saved him a couple hundred grand, so a year, which may not work for us, may, but we're only spending five to check. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, the motion. Councilman Valentine. And Councilman Vitari with a second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> so. John Edwards. <laughs> 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 Let's see. All right. So first, we have to grant permission to attend the Association of Towns. Is there Move. a motion? Move. Vice Councilman Divney, second. <laughs> Yep. Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. And we have to have a delegate. I'm the alternate, but we already agreed that the town attorney would be the delegate for the... <laughs> the thing is, just to explain why everyone's kind of joking, it's in New York City, and the only thing on the Wednesday is a breakfast that the delegate has to be at. So everyone's at the Monday, Tuesday. They don't want to go back for the Wednesday. We promised uh, we would take care of them, though, so it's okay. Uh, uh, I'll move it since I got him involved in the process. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Dibney, all in favor? Aye. All right, and then we're moving on to set a public hearing for the Orangeburg Child Daycare Center proposal, proposal, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be on April 10th at move 8 p.m. Uh, Councilman Valentine moved, did you second? Second, Tom, Tom yeah. seconds, all in favor? Uh, yes. Irish freckle tan. I'm there. sorry, was there something? On, on that one, I yes. have given you a, a more expansive right? resolution. Yeah. You may as well start to seek a process and direct the you review. Did. Sorry, let me pull that up. There we go. All right, so we got a few more things related to that. Um, let me, you know what, if you don't mind, I'm just going to get to these all at the end. Is that okay? That includes setting the public hearing. It, so oh, it included to, it as one. Yeah. So, we'll, all right, so we'll just modify that one. We're going to, the one we're moving, in fact, regarding the setting of the public hearing, also is, uh, declares our lead agency under CICRA. And, uh, yeah, so that's it, it's CICRA and also the public hearing is kind of the two things and starts the process for the interested agencies, like Rockland Planning and stuff. So are you guys OK seconding and yes. the same motion you just did? Yep. And I'll get this over to you. The motion was Valentine, the second was Divini. OK, so it's the, it's the more expansive, separate sheet version that um, didn't quite make it on the full agenda. Sorry about Charlotte, I'll send it up to you in Word. OK. Moving on to the fee structure. Um, I don't, I think, uh, Jane, do you want to come and explain it a little bit, or does anyone need to hear, we're just modifying our fees for our planning applications? Well, we're modifying the fees to reflect what the other... The market rates, essentially. The market yeah. rate. Of, Clarkstown and everyone else has this, these level of fees, and we're just trying to make it the same. Yeah, Jane explained Yeah, them. everyone's comfortable, I think. Moved. Right, and they haven't been raised since 2014. Yeah, it's been years to do it, so we're, it's not like we're doubling anything. Uh, move, a motion from Councilman Divney, is there a second? No second. Councilman Valentine, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, that's that. 
public hearing regarding, this is the hoarder situation in Pearl River. We're basically gonna have a public hearing to clear that lot out of every piece of litter and stuff as much as we legally can. Um, um, yep. Property Councilman Divini moves it. Councilman Batari seconds, all in favor? Aye. All right. Moving on to Highway Police. We have a motion to authorize assistance for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, is there a motion? Moved. Divini, second from Batari. All in favor? Aye. And then also, Assistance for the John Below Run event. Is there a motion? Moved. Divney, second from Batari. All in favor? Aye. Parks and Rec, approve showmobile for the AOH event uh, for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yep. Motion from Divney, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Then we have sewer work registrations. These are people authorized to work on sewers in the town. Yep. Moved. Motion from Divney, second from <coughs> Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and then we're on to some personnel ones, and there's going to be some on separate sheets that you guys will see at the end. Uh, this is appointing Matthew Kane permanent or electrician, no change in salary. All on uh, second, sir. Valentine. Batari seconds. Motion Valentine, second for Batari. All in favor? Aye. Lost track of myself there. Then nominate Matthew Lenahan, computer network specialist. Uh, I'll move that one. Is there a second? Yes, Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, appoint Christi Christian Catania. Permanent from temporary. Is there a motion? Move. Uh, Divini, second from Batari, all in favor. And then Geraldina Chivon to assistant court clerk, permanent. Uh, Councilman Divini, second from Valentine, all in favor. Aye. Okay, we have some, sh some other resolutions here that didn't quite make it on the main agenda, so let me make sure I hit all of those. Uh, we hit this one for the town attorney that modified it. We're doing authorizing a appraisal of certain town lands this is someone that's been used in the past from outside the area to make sure it's impartial and he's certified and everything. Uh, is there a motion? It should be at the end. Yeah. $10,000 for an appraisal of lands at RPC because we're obviously engaging in many different folks with that. Councilman Valentine, I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just had a question on that. John, are we going to use the same company that the state's using? Because oh, oh. they're getting their lands appraised at the same time? The state has not informed us yeah, they're of keeping who they're us. using. They're under, uh, they apparently have contracts uh, through yeah. DASNY. All right. There's so. like a mandated one for them they have to use. We got this guy in Westchester who's. All right. So. Yeah. yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. we can't get the name. It doesn't matter. Okay. And thank, that was your, all yours, right, John? I just, well, I up on that one. Okay. Anything else? Uh, all right, here we have an assessor one. This is important. We have to extend the, the Cold War Veterans Real Property Tax Exemption, which was passed in December 2007, is expiring. It needs to be reauthorized. Uh, it's one of those extra sheets. It says assessor on top. Uh, this we caught today, which is important because it needs to be passed by March in order to extend it. I'll make a motion. Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It doesn't change it, just make sure it keeps going. No, that was That's just background on it. About right. what it is. And then there's one more. We got finance. This is pay vouchers we'll deal with. Let's deal with OBZ PAE. C box. I'm sorry, that, yeah, okay, so OBZ PAE we're, we're, is part of our digitization. We need to move stuff out of building. It's a temporary, a temporary storage. storage it's about four thousand dollars for one to have there. So we're going to go ahead and pay for that. Motion from Councilman Valentine, second from Councilman Second. Divney, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that was it for her. There's the cost of it. And then finance, we have the pay vouchers and, and the audit and such as a separate sheet here. And yeah, this is it. it's a big contact space yeah, storage. Yeah, that's, yeah. this is the last one, so. Okay, the audit for uh, tonight's meeting there's so two warrants for a total of 694,000. The first warrant had 37 vouchers for 138,000. Items of interest, number two, Farrah Lynch, McCartney and Nugent, 20,000 for our code review. Number five, the state comptroller, 58,000 for justice fines. Uh, and those are 2017 items. The second warrant had 205 vouchers for 555,000. 2018 oh, items, Canlis. number I'll, six I'll and seven applied it. golf contracts, number eight Atlantic Salt, 103,000 for highway salt purchases, number nine GHD Consulting, 31,000 
for engineering report for the sewer dish discharges. Number 10, Global Mantello, uh, 20,000 for fuel. Number 12, JP Morgan Equipment Finance, 53,000 for the uh, Siemens Energy Performance Contract. And finally, number 14, TRC Environmental, 12,000 for aloof odor control monitoring. Any questions on the audit? No. Questions? No. All right, so we do have a motion on the audit. Moved. Councilman Divney. I'll second. Second from Councilman Valentine. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, all right, so I think that unless you guys have any new business you want to bring up real quick, nope. we're, we're going to end up adjourning into executive session to discuss real property at some point here. Did, yep. All right, so. Um, adjournment. We're going to adjourn it. So I, I, I'll move that we uh, move to executive session, discuss the sale of real property, and proceed directly to adjourn in memory of Tom. Well, Bruce McCandless, anyone that went to Pearl River High School in the uh, late 80s and 90s knew Bruce McCandless. Six foot five, full of life, and he had stroke about 14 years ago. Great guy. You know, I just remember him, his senior high school, 6'5", 220, dressed up as Pee Wee Herman for Halloween with the bike and the hat on. Uh, anyone that knew Bruce is going to miss him. I know I do. And that's all I'll say. Thank you, Tom. And uh, we'll give you that and make you make that motion, and I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate you coming by.